What's up, peeps? I am back for another video. We're gonna kick off the Tremors movies. So my plan video, I have two today. I'm gonna be doing this one, and then later tonight, I don't know the exact time, it'll probably be like mm, nine or 10, like around that time, eight, nine or 10, like in between those hours. But I am reviewing, I'll be doing the Generation Hope video later, but right now, we're going to be kicking off the Tremors movies. Because I, I feel like I've always been a big fan of, like, killer animal movies. I just always have. You know, Jaws, stuff like, like, Placid, Anaconda. So I remember watching this movie first time. I think it was on the Sci-Fi channel. Uh, I don't remember how old I exactly was. But I remember watching it because it was a killer animal movie. And just really liking it. And Kevin Bacon's in it. You get, um, like... I think it was a bit after Footloose and and uh, before he kind of started becoming big, but he wasn't like a big, big name yet. And I thought he was great in this. Him and um, Fred Ward um, were had great chemistry. Um, and like, I remember liking the practical effects. And I understand like a lot of people tell me the sequels kind of progressively get worse, but. I, I only I don't think I've ever seen the sequels. I think I've seen one of them, in the sense when like you have those movie channels that like review a, when they watch a movie they like condense it. I think I watched one of the sequels like that, but I never had sit, sat down and watched them. So I figured you know what fuck it we'll kick them off kick off with it. But that first Tremors we're watching it today. That movie is so fucking good. It's just it's a fun movie. It's not like not Jaws good, but it's very, you have a solid core group of people, which that's the one thing about a lot, a lot of the more bad killer animal movies is they get too caught up in the creature killing that they forget to have even like good characters. But like all around at this one, I thought the core group, like you have um, Val and Earl, um, Fred Ward and, um, uh, and Kevin Bacon, and then you have Rhonda. Thought she did pretty good. Like, all around that, like, core human group. And it was, it's also a very, it's, it is definitely more on the goofy side, even this one. But it definitely has that, like, isolation horror, because they're by themselves. They're in this small, isolated town. Um, I really love the special effects of the worms. Like, they did a really good job. Like, because the thing was all practical. Um, and, like, the build-up to seeing them, like... For, like, the first, like, 30 minutes, you don't see them. You see, like, the first thing you see is, like, one of the tentacles or things that you see on it. But you never see, like, its full design until, like, when they attack. And so pretty much the premise is Val and Earl are, are handymen and they're trying to leave town. And when they end up stumbling upon a bunch of bodies, they start using their serial killer. And then this is where the worms start attacking and <clears throat> they end up finding one of the body parts. And then while, while searching, this is where we get our first look at the worms. And basically, the town has to, like, basically survive. So essentially, very simple, very basic. And I think that's the other thing about movies like this. They keep... The premise is simple. It's very easy to follow. Um, you have uh, Michael Gross as Bert Sh Shimmer. Who you might... Who's gonna... You're gonna see... He becomes like the main guy throughout the later movies, so definitely I'm I'm happy to dive into these movies. It's even like yeah, like I understand like I hear like the first three or four are fine, but like they kind of get worse after that. These I at least know going in, they're gonna be bad, but it might be fun bad, you know, like where you can get drunk and high with it, which that's fine if that's all it is. I, I, that's not the worst thing in the world. So, but other than that, um. Tomorrow, I will be kicking off the John Wick movies, finally. I cannot wait. John Wick is, like, my, probably my favorite action movie for, of the, like, I guess 2010s. Definitely, like, because it was one of the few that actually kicked off the franchise, which I'm going to be doing the three of them. So, that'll be tomorrow, though. But, uh, right now, we're about to kick off the review, but here we go. So the movie opens up. <laughs> We're introduced to Val and Earl. They're 
candy men <coughs> who grow tired, who are tired of their job, head to Bixby and <coughs> traveling, they end up finding a body, but they don't know what happened. So <coughs> the town, um, uh, I think doctor deemed it, uh, the guy died of heat dehydration. <coughs> but, uh, but, but, ah. Unbeknownst to them, uh, an un unseen creature kills a bunch of sheep, and while they're driving down the road, and like the banter between um, Earl and Val is really fucking good, and I think that's the thing too. Like it's the same thing with Jaws. On like that's the best example of this, but even in this movie, like you, because you, you're gonna have to have a core group of people to follow. As much as I would love to just watch a movie of the creature, whatever creature killing people, you do gotta at least have human characters you can at least be like, alright, I can follow them. And I think that's what makes a movie like this and, I mean, and obviously the ultimate example of Jaws so good is you have you, the core group of people. Granted, it starts off mainly these two until like they go into town. Um, so while they're out, they find um, a decapitated head they think, like, a serial killer is on the loose. They try to warn some uh, construction guys, but the construction guys don't believe them. They say, oh, they're pulling our chain, and then they get killed by an unseen creature that fucks up the ground. And while Val and Earl try to get out, they, they crash into something. And um, this is where we kind of get, not our first full look at it, but we see a part of it. Part of the worms um we find part of the tentacles this is where we're introduced to other people in town you have the the, the owner um wang i think it was the guy's name it's either wong i think it's wong actually wong then you have uh this couple and then this is where we meet bert um and his wife reba and they don't know what they trying to figure out what it is and um a group of them decide to go hunt for it and this is where, basically, we get our first look at the worms. And, my God, the design is so good. You know, because they, 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 it's, it's, it's iconic because I think they go with this design for a lot of the sequels. Is that's what the worms, are, what the worms look like. And I think that's the thing about movies like this. If you're going to do a horror movie, monster, creature, animal, whatever, you got to have an iconic design that, like, that's going to stay with people. And the worms did it. You know, like, just like the... Um, you know, the Jaw Shark, even the Anaconda movie, that Anaconda specific design was for that movie, you know? And, like, and I thought the practical, the effects were very good. Because I'm, I'm assuming this movie is probably not super high budget. So, definitely awesome that, like, they, they use mostly practical. I, I mean, I'm not one of those who just shits on CGI. I understand the use of CGI. I do think there are some things you do have to use, do CGI for. There just is. But at least not heavily rely on it. It's always nice to watch some great practical. So the worms uh, attack them and they, ch get, they chase it into a creek, not a creek, uh, a bank where it crashes and they seemingly kill one of them. And this is where we meet another character named uh, uh, Rhonda, who um, is a seismologist. And they she deduces that the creatures are um, uh, attracted by um, um, vibrations, and she also deduces that there's more than one. So they may have only killed one, but there's still, like, I think she said three other ones out there. And they end up having to stow away at this location for the night. Um, the next day, they, they make it back to town. Um, the worms attack, and... They end up attacking the store, um, and kill, they end up killing Wong, because, uh, one of them tried to attack, uh, the little boy, and, like, I think another thing about it I like is the whole isolation aspect. I've always been a big fan of isolation horror. I think that's what, it makes it that much scarier that like you're by yourself here, you know, because they're in this, like, small little town. The roads are fucked up, and it's a good, like, they they do a good job of explaining why they're still there. I think if a movie goes that extra mile, like, we're gonna try to explain to you why they're here. You know, because 
you know, because there are some questions, like, you know, legit, like, why why not just leave? So they explain, like, all oh, the worms fuck up the, um, the, um, the, the, um, they end up, like, basically destroying, like, the power, too. And I think that's what makes the worms formidable of foes is because they can fuck up the power, you know, because they can burrow underground and shit. Um, so, um, the worms end up attacking and they end up killing Wong. And while, uh, Bird and his wife run down to the cellar because they're trying to make weapons, worm attacks them. They end up killing it by shooting it to death. And then they decide they create some pipe bombs while, uh, um, Val, Earl, Rhonda, and then some of the other crew have to climb on top of a building to basically avoid being attacked by the worms. And... And I, I think the other thing I like about this movie is it's paced perfectly, and the music's really good, actually. Granted, this is a Universal movie. Universal's very good, especially at this time period, of making, like, really memorable, like, scores. So they end up going climbing on top of the roof. Um, they make a makeshift, uh, basically, like, bulldozer to basically escape. Um... So Val decides he wants to try to kill one. They end up killing one of them with a pipe bomb. But they try to kill the other one. But the other one spits it out. So Val decides to basically do a suicide mission. And run down and have it chase him to the cliff. Where one of them does do that. And he manages to evade it. And it crashes into the ground below. Dying. I think, like, that's a thing about this movie is just the simplicity of it. That's why, like, I'm not going really in-depth because it's a very straightforward movie, you know? I thought Kevin Bacon was great. I thought um, Fred Ward, his, their dynamic, and a little, you know, Rhonda's, like, the love interest for Val. Like, they're kind of building it up slow, but it doesn't get in way of the movie. I'm not against love stories because, you know, I understand. They're kind of like a have-to in most movies. But I think there's a way to do it and not, it not get in the fucking way of the plot. And I don't think it really does in this one. I think they did a good job of, like, they built it up slowly. You know, like, there's a moment earlier where he saves her from the worm. So, they end up killing um, the worm. And then she she's about to leave. And um, they start, basically, they build up the connection and then kind of the film ends after that. Because I, I think they probably are... This was when movies didn't ha plan a sequel. You know, movies were like, if this is a hit, we'll do a sequel. But, but like, it's not like nowadays where they would leave... Like, they would have, like, an ending where it sets up. And honestly, I kind of prefer it that way. You don't always have to set up for, an end, like, a, a, a sequel. You can just end it in a, oh, sequel's happening. Because that's how a lot of the time it was. Movie ends... Sometimes they, they know going in if it's like a trilogy, a planned trilogy, but for the most part, a movie like this, probably, they didn't know if they were going to get a sequel. So they just like, we're going to do this as like a one-off story, but if it does well, it gets a sequel, and, I, and it did, so I think that's fine. But this is an awesome movie. The core group of people, there's even some kid actors in there that aren't annoying. I think the special effects are great. Just an all-around very simple story. If you've not seen Tremors, I would recommend it. Yeah, it's a little bit on the... Even the first one is a little bit on, like, the B-movie side. But there's nothing wrong with that. It's still a great movie. And Kevin Bacon's great in it. Like, I think he's, like, the biggest... In terms of the human characters, he's the highlight. Granted, I think Fred Ward was great, too. Like, like I thought the all-around the core group of characters was really good. Like, it sucked when Wong, the uh, store owner died i thought that was pretty sad and even like the moments where the worm is hunting and you see like the little vibrations on the ground are fucking cool you could tell a lot of there's a lot of like not callbacks but like homages to old school like well not just i don't even just say jaws but like those old school because <laughs> after jaws there was a, a lot of like killer like animal movies so which i thought this was a perfect example of one and bert's an all-around great character and then yeah oh Another thing, there were strong female characters. There's two of them. There's uh, the main scientist girl, Rhonda, but then 
Bert's wife, um, Rita, and she's, you know, she's good with guns. She knows how to build bombs. But th they were, it's just natural back then. But anyway, um, this movie is an all-around awesome movie. I would heavily recommend it. Um, I haven't watched two or three, so I can't really say right now. But I'm going to watch uh, Tremors 2 next week. So next Tuesday, I'll be doing that. So, But if I were to give the first one out of 10, definitely a 9. I, I would heavily recommend it. It's an awesome... Just even just watch it for just like the special effects. But the effects for the worms are great. Like they don't... I don't think... I, and I'm watching it on like a, a, like a 1080p really good quality TV. So it's like... There are even like really good movies. Sometimes you could tell the when something's like the effects are kind of wonky. I didn't see any moment like that in this movie. Like I felt like it looked really good, largely. So, and the dynamic between the characters is great. So, um, but other than that, um, I'm gonna cheers to this movie, and yeah. So tomorrow, I'm going to review John Wick 1. John Wick 1, I wish I watched it. I unfortunately didn't watch it when it came out. I remember it when it came out. It was 2014. And I didn't see it when it came out. I just, I don't know why. I just, I didn't, nothing, something didn't compel me to. But when the second one came out, I remember seeing because I was going to see it, I decided to watch the first one. And I'm like, oh my god, I missed out. Because this movie is easily one of, probably the best action movie of the 2010s. Because at that time, you didn't really get a lot of action movies. Because at that point, that's when, like, the comic book superhero movie movie craze was kind of going. So those that almost, like, took that void for action. Besides, like, some stuff like Mission Impossible. You had, like, the Expendables in the early 2010s. But that was it. So it was kind of nice to get something that was new. And the fact that it was just the, the, a simple revenge premise about a, dog, a man's dog getting killed and he wants to get payback for it. And this is a movie that pretty much revitalized, I would say, Keanu's career because I don't think he was really doing much after that or before. He did do a, a really dope samurai movie like a year before, which I might review at some point, 47 Ronin, but this movie heavily revitalized his career, and that's what made him, like, decide, you know what, I'm gonna come back, so definitely gonna finally review this movie. Probably wish, I, I, I was kind of dragging out the Keanu stuff before we got to him, but yeah, it's time. So, but that'll be tomorrow. But other than that, as normal, fuck Warner Brothers, fuck Disney, fuck LeBron, fuck Colin Kaepernick, fuck Seth Rogen, fuck Kevin Smith, and fuck the Biden administration. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Talk to y'all actually later tonight. Peace!